Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the funniest and most influential cartoons starring Daffy Duck. Don't let that bother you, Jack. Okay, buddy, you asked for it. Number 10, Design for Leaving. Each Warner Brothers director put their own spin on Daffy. Robert McKimson often cast him as a swindler, taking advantage of Porky in the prize pest and dime to retire. If we eat five dollars, well, uh, well, uh, okay. I just gotta get rid of that mouse. Here, one, two, three, four, five. He'd also don a slick salesman persona in cartoons like Design for Leaving, which stands out due to Daffy's pairing with Elmer Fudd. Usually, Daffy finds himself at Elmer's mercy. In this case, it's Daffy who targets the hunter, but not with a rifle. <laughs> From the second Elmer opens his door, Daffy bombards him with rapid-fire salesmanship, not taking no for an answer. Adorning Elmer's house with chaotic gadgets, the short finds Daffy at his most relentless, but also his most charismatic, with Mel Blanc giving one of his most dynamic performances as the character. Say, that's a good question. What do you say we find out? Number 9. Baby Bottleneck Of all the Termite Terrace directors, Bob Clampett might have had the looniest eye for comedy. With Daffy arguably being the looniest Looney Tune, he was a natural fit for Clampett. Baby Bottleneck would go down as one of Clampett's most unhinged Daffy cartoons. <laughs> Daffy might not be a stork, but he joins the delivery business with Porky. The premise leads to some cheeky one-liners, one of which proved too edgy for the Hayes office. Baby alligator to Mrs. Pig. It's in the visual humor where the cartoon shines the most, unleashing a literal assembly line of gags. After Daffy and Porky get into an argument about sitting on an egg, they find themselves on the assembly line, leading to a finale that takes the insanity into overdrive. <laughs> Number 8. Drip Along Daffy In their earlier pairings, Daffy was usually billed as Porky's sidekick. By the time Drip Along Daffy came along, the duck had firmly asserted himself as the star. The cartoon's opening title card spells this out for us. And her name is Minerva Ouch. She's the flower of the flower. Even then, Porky found a way to steal the spotlight back. Porky seems content with letting Daffy go up against an outlaw named Nasty Canasta, whose tiny legs hilariously should not be able to support his massive upper body. Listen, Humber, if and you're not out of town by sundown, you better come a-shooting with your six guns a-blazing and a-firing. Setting us up for a high noon showdown, the short culminates in a classic anti-climax that sees Porky save the day. Directed by Chuck Jones and written by Michael Maltese, this cartoon gets to the root of Porky and Daffy's dynamic, with the latter being the true comedic relief. I told you I'd clean up this one-horse town. Number 7. Drafty Daffy For a while, Daffy was a source of anarchy with little to lose. While still maintaining his eccentric persona, Drafty Daffy tapped into what would become a defining character trait, the need for self-preservation. I guess he's gone now. Well, oh, now I wouldn't say that. With World War II ongoing, Daffy is all about patriotism, until the little man from the draft board, no, seriously, that's his name, comes knocking. Howdy doody, son. With geeky glasses, a onesie ensemble, and a slow manner of speaking, the draft board man is among the least intimidating Looney Tunes characters. This only adds to the humor, as Daffy runs rampant around the house, inexplicably encountering the little man around every turn. Bob Clampett once again brings his lightning speed timing to the table, with Daffy sending himself to hell and back again. Anyway, I sure put it over on that dope from the draft board. Oh, well, now I wouldn't say that. No, no, no. Number 6. Showbiz Bugs Bugs is the winner we all like to see ourselves as, but in reality, we're probably closer to Daffy. 
few shorts better exemplify their rivalry than showbiz bugs. Directed by Frizz Freeling with a story from Warren Foster. Try not to trip me up with those big feet, please. I'll try, Daffy. We're on! Challenging the rabbit for top billing, Daffy receives nothing but crickets while Bugs absorbs the applause. Getting himself cut in half and blowing off his beak in pursuit of attention, this is Daffy at his greediest and most self-destructive. Yet a part of us still wants to see him come out on top. Swallow the match. So. He does, but at a price that serves as both a victory and a loss. The ending delivers a perfect punchline that needs no encore, even if Daffy could give one. They want more! I know, I know, but I can only do it once. Number 5. The Scarlet Pumpernickel No Looney Tune demands to be taken seriously more than Daffy. What better way to present himself in a dignified light than by casting himself as a swashbuckling hero in an epic? Daffy presents his skyscraper-sized script to Jack Warner, or JL as he casually calls him. That night, my Lord Chamberlain receives the noble visitor. Milady the fair Melissa is indisposed, my lord? Side note, Daffy's middle name is Dumas. While Daffy takes center stage, he casts his fellow Looney Tunes in supporting roles. This results in several rare pairings. It's among the few times we see Daffy with Sylvester, and one of Melissa Duck's only appearances. Parting is such sweet stuff. But you will be safe here, my beloved. It also allows these characters to play against type, with Porky as a villain and Daffy sporting multiple masks. It's a standard seven minutes, but we totally watch the feature-length version Daffy pitches. Coming, Melissa! <laughs> Number 4. Robin Hood Daffy Daffy goes from playing the Scarlet Pumpernickel to channeling Errol Flynn again in Robin Hood Daffy. Just because Daffy wears the green outfit doesn't automatically make him the king of the outlaws. He needs to convince Friar Porky, as well as the audience. Oh, <laughs> To prove himself, Daffy engages in all of the typical Robin Hood activities, continually missing his mark. The funniest bit finds Daffy swinging from tree to tree. And away! And away! Speaking of which, the backgrounds are some of the most visually pleasing in any Chuck Jones cartoon, but that doesn't take away from the pain Daffy experiences. We never learn whether Daffy really is Robin Hood or if he just desperately wanted people to think he was. Either way, he changes professions by the end. Number 3. Duck Dodgers in the 24th and a Half Century Duck Dodgers may be Daffy's most famous alter ego, headlining this Buck Rogers send-up. Aesthetically, Duck Dodgers is one of Chuck Jones' most ambitious shorts. I claim this planet in the name of the Earth! Maurice Noble's layouts and Philip Degard's backgrounds envision a polished yet appropriately loony future. It's the character dynamics that propel this cartoon to one of the all-time greats, however. Daffy once again fills the egotistical incompetent leader role, while Porky's eager young space cadet is the true brains of the operation. Oh, you, huh? Marvin the Martian also serves as a terrific comedic foil in a space race that ironically destroys Planet X. Duck Dodgers would inspire follow-up shorts and a TV series, but the original remains the Star Wars of Golden Age cartoons. It was even a favorite of George Lucas's. <laughs> Number 2. The Great Piggy Bank Robbery before there was Duck Dodgers, there was Duck Tracy, a parody of Dick Tracy. The great piggy bank robbery demonstrates Bob Clampett's tendency to go the extra mile. I shall ring the bell from here. Was that trip really necessary? When Daffy receives a comic book in the mail, the cartoon could have just jumped to him opening the first page. Instead, he excitedly zooms across a sunlit hill before diving in. Every second that goes by, Clampett's unit packs in as much detail and humor as possible. The premise surrounding a stolen piggy bank might be silly, but the crew brings a surprisingly hard-boiled ambiance to the short through the backgrounds and the inventive designs of Duck Twasey's foes. It's some of the most creative imagery in any Looney Tune, 
as well as some of the funniest. Shall we dance? Hooey! Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Porky's Duck Hunt. In his official debut, Daffy stole the show from Porky. <laughs> it's me again. <laughs> The Daffy Dock. Daffy doesn't get daffier than this. The Abominable Snow Rabbit. What comes to mind whenever we meet someone named George? I will name him George, and I will hug him and pet him and squeeze him. I'm not a bunny rabbit. Hollywood Daffy. Daffy encounters a cavalcade of celebrity caricatures. Good morning, Mr. Weissmuller. Oh! Porky's Pig Feet, a rare Golden Age cartoon where Daffy, Porky, and Bugs share the screen. We tried all those lanes. Ah, don't work, do they? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Duck Amuck Duck Amuck isn't just the best Daffy cartoon. It's a shimmering example of what animation can do, which is everything. In under seven minutes, Daffy becomes a musketeer, a farmer, and whatever this is. Oh, I feel all right, and yet I, I, uh... Hey! You know better than that! He finds himself at the mercy of a mysterious animator who can't seem to settle on a background or scenario. While the Looney Tunes regularly broke the fourth wall, this cartoon broke down barriers in ways the audience never experienced before. To find that this is an animated cartoon, and that in animated cartoons they have scenery, and in all the years I... Chuck Jones might have been too ahead of the curve, hence why Duck Amuck shockingly wasn't nominated for an Oscar. However, 1,000 professionals would rank it the second greatest cartoon of all time. It finished just behind a Bugs Bunny cartoon, which is fitting considering how Duck Amuck ends. Who is responsible for this? this? I demand that you show yourself! Who are you? Huh? Am I a stinker? What's your favorite Daffy cartoon? Let us know in the comments. Oh, no, you don't. Sorry. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.